Creating a pension switching quote using a custom product. Once you have created your own customised product to use on the system, you can use it in the same way as if it were any other product available. To generate a pension switching quote for our client, you must start in the client that you want to run the quote for. To do this, click on Clients on the left and then My Client. This will open up our client search area and it will automatically bring through a list of all the clients that you've previously loaded onto the system. To generate a quote for an existing client, double click on them to open them up. Or to create a new client, click on create new client in your taskbar at the top. I will open up an existing client. Now within the client you can store a lot of information and all the information sections are listed on the left hand side. The two main sections to complete in order to run a pension switching quote are personal details and quotes. So we'll focus on these two sections. Within personal details you must enter the client's name, date of birth and gender. Everything else in here is optional. Once you've completed the name, date of birth and gender, click on the quote section and it will take you to the quote area. Within the quote section is a list of quotes that I've previously ran for this client and if I want to rerun those quotes, I just double click on them to open them up. I can then edit them, manage them, rerun them. And if you want to create a new quote, click on create new quote in the top right hand corner of this section. You can then select the type of quote you would like to run for this client. And when you create that quote, it will automatically store it within this area. I will open up an existing quote. Now within the pension switching quote, you work your way from top to bottom, completing all of the relevant sections here. The first section is quote details. In this section, you can give your quote a reference that will help you identify the quote in future. You can then set the status of the quote to current, previous or proposed. On the right hand side is a comments box. This is a free text box. Type in here whatever you want. It will not appear in any of your switching results or reports. It just allows you to put any notes or comments about this particular quote in here. So this quote details section, any information you put in here will not have any impact on your quote results. It's just purely for you to manage your quote. We then head into the current plans and portfolios section and this is where you're going to tell us all about the client's existing plans. And when you first come in here, this area will be blank, it will be empty. So to tell us about the client's existing plans, you've got a couple of options. In the top right hand corner, you've got select plan and create plan. Select plan then, if you've already created the client's current plan in the client area, we wouldn't expect you to create it again. All you need to do is click on select plan. You can then select all of the client's portfolios or you can go through and select each individual one that you're considering switching out of. Alternatively, if you've not already created the client's current plan, that's absolutely fine. You can create it in here. And when you do create the client's current plan in here, what the system will do is it will automatically store that current plan against the client. So if you need to use it again in the future, you don't have to create it again. So whether you create the client's current plan in the client area or you create it in the quoting area, you'll only ever have to create it once. But once you have a list of the client's current plans here that you're considering switching out of, double click on the plan and it will spin around. This is where you then tell us all about the existing plan projection details. So the first thing we need to know is the current plan name. Type in there exactly how you want it to appear on the report. So make sure there's no spelling mistakes, for example, on there. 
And on the right hand side, select the provider of that current plan using your drop down box. Underneath that, it asks us about current plan maturity values. And the first thing we need to know is the retirement age. What's the retirement age that you have on your existing plan projection so that we can match with that like for like? So type the retirement age in here. We then need to know the projected maturity basis. So what basis has the existing provider used to project forward to maturity? And you select the basis from this drop down list here. So you've got a few to choose from and I'll go through each one in turn. The one that's highlighted is inflation adjusted rate supplied. So since April 2014, the FCA has stated that providers must produce pension projections using inflation adjusted growth rates. That's where you take growth rates, you reduce them for inflation, which is at present 2.5%. In order to check if you've been given an inflation adjusted growth rate quote, it will mention inflation adjustment on the illustration and normally the low growth rate will be a negative growth rate. The industry standard growth rate at the minute for the low growth rate is 2% and if you reduce that taking account of inflation of around 2.5% that will produce a negative growth rate so you can look out for those two key factors. The other options that we have on here, you've got monetary rate supply. So prior to April 2014, this was the, the norm. This was the way most providers were producing their projection figures. And this is where there was no account for inflation whatsoever. So just normal growth rates projecting forward to give you final maturity values with no deduction for inflation. That option is still on there at present to honour any pre previous quotes you have that were produced prior to April 2014. You then have SMPI rate supply. Now SMPI stands for statutory money purchase illustration and this was the old method of building inflation into our comparisons. So this is where providers would project forward using normal growth rates, so no account for inflation on the growth rate. They then have final maturity values and they then reduce those maturity values taking account of inflation. So this is one way of adding inflation adjustment on there. So some providers may adopt this approach as opposed to the inflation adjusted rates approach. The final option on here is estimated by the system and that big bit of red text that's just appeared basically says don't do it. It's not a compliant method of projecting. But what it's there for is if you have a provider that's not giving you a projection to maturity, it can be quite difficult for you to then make a comparison. So what to do is enter an annual management charge in here and we'll then give you an estimate of what that maturity might be. Now it's not compliant so please do not use it with your clients. It might just be though that peace of mind exercise for you to carry out to check the figures stack up before you sort of delve any further into the comparison. I will leave it on inflation adjusted rate supply because this is what you're likely to see more often than not. And once we know the basis that the provider has used, we then need to know the growth rates that they've used. So using the next drop down, the first option on here is industry standard growth rates. Now at present, industry standard growth rates are 2, 5 and 8%. And taking account for inflation, they come out at minus 0.49, 2.44 and 5.37%. So if these are the growth rates that you've been quoted, select industry standard and then just input your corresponding maturity values into the relevant row. If you've not been given industry standard growth rates, so any growth rates other than these figures here, Click on fund specific growth rates and that will allow you to type in the growth rates you've been given by that existing provider. Pop in your corresponding maturity values and we'll then use the exact same growth rates to compare with all the other pension products on the system, including your custom product. If the existing provider has produced an illustration where they use individual growth rates for each of the individual funds, and don't give you an overall weighted growth rate, we can help you with that using this calculator button here. So if you click on calculator, it will open up just a miniature spreadsheet. 
You can then select the number of funds the client is currently in. That will put that subsequent number of rows into the spreadsheet and you just type the details in. So fund name, percentage invested and the low, mid and high rates that you've been quoted. And down the bottom here, we will then calculate the overall weighted growth rate. And whatever that weighted growth rate comes out as, we pop it into the growth rate column here, and we then use that growth rate for all other providers going forward. I'll pop it back on industry standard growth rates for now. Now down the bottom of this section, it says click here to enter current plan funds. So this is where you enter the funds that the client is currently invested in. Now you don't have to do it, it's not mandatory, it will have no impact on the results, but what it will do is in the pension switching report, it will plot a past performance chart showing the past performance of the client's existing portfolio of funds. So if that's what you want to do, use this search box to find the fund that you're looking for, and once you find the fund, type the percentage invested in that fund. On the left hand side, you can input any continuing contributions here. If the client is paying into their existing plan, that will have a huge impact on the maturity value, so we want to know about that. Now, when you type in a gross premium here, two things happen. You get a paid up maturity value column on the right hand side, so you can run paid up comparisons alongside your non paid up. And underneath the gross premium, you can then select the frequency of that contribution and if any escalation is currently being applied to that contribution. If there is any escalation, we will also ask the month that it escalates on. Now, we know that more often than not, it will be policy anniversary month, but the system doesn't know when that policy anniversary is. So just make sure you do select the correct month. I'll take that figure out for now. And in the bottom left hand corner, type in the current value, transfer value and the as at date of those values of the plan. Now the as at date is absolutely crucial. We will then apply the same as at date to all the new products, including your custom products, assuming the transfer took place on this date. That will then ensure the same number of months to retirement, which will in turn ensure the same amount of growth being applied, the same number of contributions, etc. So we've input all the details for this existing plan here. Once you're finished, click on the two little arrows in the top right hand corner and what that will do is it will spin us back around to where we started. So I can now update all the details for my next current plan and so on. Now we're looking at switching out of two existing plans here. So when we're looking at switching out of multiple plans, what the system will do is it will always attempt to produce a consolidated comparison where we add the existing plans together and assume they're going into one new plan. Now the only condition that needs to be met is that the existing plans must be projecting forward to the same retirement age. That will enable us to run a like for like comparison. Even when we are looking at consolidating existing plans, we will also give you individual results for each plan on its own. So if we just glance to the left here, we've got a set of results for consolidating our plans, but we also have a set of results for each plan individually. So we don't expect you to run three quotes eh, separately, we will run them all simultaneously. Now what we've just done so far with this client is we've established the client's current situation, what they have in their existing plan. What we do with all the next few sections is establish the new situation. So what is it you or the client is looking for from a new pension product? So the first new element that we come to is new investment. Now within your custom product, you will have already set up the fund investment within that custom product and applied the charges accordingly. Therefore, this area here will not impact your custom product whatsoever. 
What this area here is for, this is for you to select funds or sectors to apply to all the other products that's on the system. So this will not affect your custom product, but it will affect all the other products that you want to compare that custom product alongside. So you can either select sectors in here, as I've done, I've selected the old balance managed sector there to apply, so that will apply a balance managed fund for all the other products. Or if you want to use specific funds for those products, click on use specific funds. And you can either click on select funds, which will open up our fund research area, or you can go to actions and import funds over from any model portfolios that you might have created. But I'll stick with using sector defaults for now. The next section then is advisor charges. So these are the advisor charges that you will take for carrying out your pension switch recommendation. Now these advisor charges will be applied across all products, including your custom product. So you have your initial advisor charges on the left hand side and your ongoing advisor charges on the right hand side. And using your drop down, you select the style of charge that you would like to take. So the options on here are no initial charge whatsoever, or you've got an initial amount, which would be a monetary value, or an initial percentage, which would be a percentage value. And when you select amount or percentage, the system will ask you what amount or what percentage would you like to take. So type the details in that box. Likewise, for ongoing charges, you've got no ongoing charge, an ongoing annual amount or an ongoing annual percentage. And when you select annual amount or annual percentage, it will also ask you how frequently you would like that paid out. The next section is the new plan section. Optionally click here and reduce the number of plans used in the comparison by using the search filters. This area is optional because we always automatically select all of the products to use in the comparison across the board and that includes our custom product as well. You can see I have here an example custom product. If however you only wanted to use um, your custom products you can use your filters on the left hand side here and product types you can select custom products, pop a tick in that box click on your search icon, it will refresh and it will purely bring through your custom product. Therefore, all the results will just be based on this one example custom product. If you want to include the other products, however, leave that unticked and you can just then compare your custom product alongside all of the other pension products that we have available. We now head into results. So we've got three sets of results at the bottom. Now just to remind ourselves what these results are. So results for consolidating our two existing plans and then a set of results for each plan individually. So we'll focus on the consolidated set of results. Now our results will be sorted in order of highest maturity value at the mid growth rate. And you'll see our existing plans there in that list. So anything above it is producing a higher projected maturity value at the mid growth rate. Anything below it is producing a lower projected maturity value at the mid growth rate. And we can see our custom product up the top here. Now when you have your set of results, you can then use these headings at the top to focus in on key areas that you would like to analyse for your pension switch. I'll focus on the first two here, maturity values. We give you maturity values for inflation adjusted terms and we'll also then reinflate those values up into nominal maturity values. That will just help you explain to your client the impact of inflation. And we do that in our results and also in our pension switching report. You've then got AGR stroke ASM, just to explain what these means because they are abbreviations. We have annual growth required or annual safety margin. So what this is telling us is, if we look at our custom product here, this is telling us if our existing plan was to grow at 2% year on year, 
Our custom product here would only need to grow at 1.7% year on year in order to match our existing plans. So it can underperform our existing plans by 0.3% and still match it. If we were to look down at, let's just say, this um, Prudential plan, that would need to grow at 2.2% year on year in order to match our existing plans. So that's an additional growth required of 0.2%. But you can click on all these headings here to focus in, as I said, on key areas for your analysis. And my switching results is a combination of all these different areas pulled through into one page. Now, once you've decided which product you want to recommend, what you do is you click on that product to highlight it. So we can use our custom product in the exact same way that we can use any other product. And once you've highlighted that product, we then want to produce reports to justify our recommendation. So we click on reports at the top here, and we then get a whole host of reports available. The reports that we have available on here then, calculation summary sheet, that will produce all the calculation figures for the product that we've got highlighted, so how we produce our maturity value. You've then got a current view report. Now that report will detail all of the client information, all the current plan information, all of the new quote details, and it will also produce a printout of these results here, showing our existing plans alongside the other products as well as your custom product. There's an FCA suitability template in there. That's the FCA template that they use as a checklist when reviewing pension switching cases. So we've made that template available for you to complete. We have pre-populated it with all the information you've put into the system and all the information that's been generated out of the system. Product sourcing. So that report will detail any filters that you've applied to our product list. So for example, if you did select custom products only, our results will just have our custom products in here. Therefore, our sourcing report will tell us that that's the reason why, because we've selected custom products. Quote request form is just a PDF document which you can email or print off and fax to the provider with all the quote details on it. There's a stakeholder comparison that compares the product you're recommending alongside a generic stakeholder contract, so no particular stakeholder plan, and it looks at yearly transfer values and product charges and information. And then we have the switching report, and the switching report is the head-to-head -head comparison between what the client currently has and what you're recommending they go into. So it will look at all the information that we've highlighted in this table here, so it will look at your maturity values alongside each other, if there's any additional growth required or safety margin, etc., and it will put them head-to-head. And as we're looking at switching out of multiple current plans, it produces three reports in one, so it does a consolidated comparison, and it will then produce each individual plan comparison on that report as well. So that's all for pension switching using a custom product. Thanks for listening. Goodbye.